that uh, reflect my ruling immediately prior to the lunch recess. And so what I'm providing is um, excerpts of mental health treatment records that reflect a diagnosis and then giving you the date range uh, that the records reflect that that diagnosis continued to be noted on treatment records. Uh, so that uh, I identified the first day that that diagnosis was made, provided you an excerpt from that record that shows that diagnosis and the, and the uh, I guess, the specifics of the diagnosis. And then just simply, again, giving you a date range. And I've done that for both Miss Allen and Jeremy Holden. And I've reserved any ruling as to the admissibility. Uh, one concern I would have is to the admissibility of this information for the purposes of impeaching based on inability to remember or to discern or to recount is that the last treatment for any post-traumatic stress disorder for Miss Holden was in the records that I have was May 1st 2015 and the last one for Mr. Jeremy Holden was September 28, 2015. And I've not been, in the information that you've provided me uh, for, on behalf of the defense, I've not uh, seen any indication that uh, any memory loss that might be associated with post-traumatic stress disorder is a permanent condition. And so we have treatment for a condition that ends more than a year ago and no scientific basis that I'm aware of before the court anyway that says this is permanent and things that may have occurred prior to this condition, condition continue, the memory loss continues to exist after the condition has been treated or treatment is no longer deemed necessary. So that would be a, a specific concern I'd have about the admissibility of using that information to challenge the recall of a witness to, uh, that's testifying today. Could I, could I have two moments? Yes. Yes. Um, we, we do not plan to pursue the specific questions about that based on the, the court's order and all. If we, if we do change your mind about that, I will ask to be heard before I ask any questions about that. That will be fine. Appreciate that. All right, very good. So anything else that we need to take up before we resume, uh, I believe, with cross-examination of Ms. Allen? No, sir. All right, so Ms. Allen, if you'll resume your seat, please. And if we could bring jurors in. record the three articles that you sent to me by email yes sir. Uh, I can either just provide the clerk with a copy of that email uh, I think they were sent to me over the weekend but and I know they were copied to the state but I'll just print that out print out the citations to those articles at least that's fine
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going <coughs> to proceed right where we left off. I believe Mr. Brown was in the midst of cross-examination of uh, Ms. Allen. Yes. Um, good afternoon, Ms. Allen. Good afternoon. Um, I've been told I'm going to try to speak up a little bit in, in case I don't know if you had trouble hearing or the members of the jury had trouble hearing as well, may have had trouble hearing too. So if my voice sounds a little louder, that may be the reason why. Um, you and Nate split up on December 20th, 2013. Is that correct? That's correct. And when you split up originally, there was agreement at that point, and there was no formal court agreement at that point. Is that correct? That's correct. And at that point, um, as far as custody of the kids, you both just sort of shared custody. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, nobody. Um, it was sort of maybe sort of done on a day by day or week by week basis who was going to have custody of the kids. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, at that time, at coming to January of, of 2014, January 1st of 2014, Jeremy was staying with, with his dad. Right? That's correct. Um, but in, it was on January 2nd that you went to go to court to file for cu custody. Is that correct? That's correct. And for the um, restraining order at that point. That's correct. Um, and so that was the first time that you had basically made a decision to try to get full custody of the kids. Is that correct? Yes, sir. At least on a temporary basis. Yes, sir. Um, and when you, we, you talked about your confrontation with Nate, um, that was the first time you had seen him face to face after you had decided to get full custody of the kids, correct? I got full custody that evening. Yeah, but yes. you, had, you had already decided that that's what you were going to do when you went to the courthouse. That's right. And that's the first time you had seen Nate since you had made that decision. That's right. Okay. And he was upset. That's correct. Um, and when he was upset, he, what he was complaining about was that you were trying to take the kids away. Yes, and that I wasn't talking to him. And you weren't talking to him. And you had not seen Nate act that way during your years of marriage, had you? That's correct. That's I haven't. First, this is the first time you had seen him? Yes. Act that way. Um... And you said that in, you, you had a, the biggest part of the argument was sort of outside, across from the public safety center? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and he was yelling at you? Yes, sir. He said he had his fist against your face? Yes, sir. Um, but that was the only physical contact he had against you at and that time? And his finger in my face. And your finger, he had the finger in your face like this? Yes. Okay. Um, but at that point... He had not. He had not hit you at that point. That's correct. Okay. Um, and you talked with him and convinced him to go to a restaurant. That's correct. And you all agreed to go to Golden Corral. That's correct. And at the. over the weekend, but, and I know they were copied to the state, but I'll just print that out, print out the citations to those articles at least. That's fine. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going <coughs> to 
proceed right where we left off. I believe Mr. Brown was in the midst of cross-examination of uh, Ms. Allen. Yes. Um, good afternoon, Ms. Allen. Good afternoon. Um, I've been told I'm going to try to speak up a little bit in, in case I don't know if you had trouble hearing or the members of the jury had trouble hearing as well, may have had trouble hearing too. So if my voice sounds a little louder, that may be the reason why. Um, you and Nate split up on December 20th, 2013. Is that correct? That's correct. And when you split up originally, there was agreement at that point, and there was no formal court agreement at that point. Was that correct? That's correct. And at that point, um, as far as custody of the kids, you both just sort of shared custody. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, nobody, um, it was sort of maybe sort of done on a day by day, a week by week basis who was going to have custody of the kids. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, at that time, at coming to January of, of 2014, January 1st of 2014, Jeremy was staying with, with his dad, right? That's correct. Um, but in, it was on January 2nd that you went to go to court to file for cu custody. Is that correct? That's correct. And for the um, restraining order at that point. That's correct. Um, and so that was the first time that you had basically made a decision to try to get full custody of the kids. Is that correct? Yes, sir. At least on a temporary basis. Yes, sir. Um, and when you we, you talked about your confrontation with Nate, um, that was the first time you had seen him face to face after you had decided to get full custody of the kids, correct? I got full custody that evening. Yeah, but yes. you, had, you had already decided that that's what you were going to do when you went to the courthouse. That's right. And that's the first time you had seen Nate since you had made that decision. That's right. Okay. And he was upset. That's correct. Um, and when he was upset, he, what he was complaining about was that you were trying to take the kids away. Yes, and that I wasn't talking to him. And you weren't talking to him. And you had not seen Nate act that way during your years of marriage, had you? That's correct. That's I haven't. This is the first time you had seen him? Yes. Act that way. Um, and you said that in, you, you had a, the biggest part of the argument was sort of outside, across from the public safety center? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and he was yelling at you? Yes, sir. He said he had his fist against your face? Yes, sir. But that was the only physical contact he had against you at and that time? And his finger in my face. And your finger, in, he had the finger in your face like this? Yes. Okay. Um, but at that point, he had, not, he had not hit you at that point? That's correct. Okay. Um, and you talked with him and convinced him to go to a restaurant? That's correct. And you all agreed to go to Golden Corral? That's correct. And at the, um, and it was on your way to the Golden Corral that you got a, a phone call from a police officer. Yes, sir. Who told you about a threat? Is that correct? That's correct. That Nate had made to Sylvester. That's correct. Your brother. Yes, sir. Who then? told the police officer yes sir who then told you about it my brother told my dad and i believe my dad called the school okay so how it went was your brother told your dad yes what happened your dad called the school yes the school called the police officer yes sir the police officer called you yes and so the threats that you talked about in the restraining order, that's where it came from, the threats. Correct. Okay. On it. Um, uh, 
this custody arrangement, you had full custody of the kids from that date until January 21st. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And that's when you all entered into a consent order about custody of the kids. Yes, sir. And that custody arrangement was that you had primary custody, but Nate got the kids every other weekend? That's correct. Okay. And that continued until Jeremy reported the incident with your dad. That's correct. And on January 30th, Nate filed an emergency petition with the court to get custody of the children. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's what happened? Yes. Um, he got custody of the children, and they went to stay with him. That's correct. And... You then went to court on February 10th, 2014. Yes, sir. And the court had a custody hearing at that point. Yes, sir. And they heard testimony from the um, CPS social worker, Kathy Suthall. Yes, sir. Um, and she described the allegations and her investigations about what Jeremy had said happened with your dad. That's correct. Um, and it was determined at that point, and it was also said that Jeremy's preference was that for primary custody, he wanted to live with his dad. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and the court, and at that time, you did not object to that proposal. No, sir. And so what the court ruled then was that Amber and Nautica would primarily be living with you. Yes, sir. And Jeremy would be primarily living with his dad. Yes. And that on weekends it would rotate who would be, um, that, the, that the three kids would all be together. Yes, sir. And it would rotate which of you two he would be, um, the kids would be living with. That's correct. Okay. And that was the arrangement from that time, from February 10th, until the day that your, your parents were shot. Is that true? That's true. Okay. Um, during the time from January 2nd until the day of the crime, the primary contact that you would have with Nate would be through phone. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, did you ever see him in person in between those dates? For the exchanges on Fridays and Sunday okay. Um, evenings. Okay. So when you primarily talked, you either texted or you, you did phone calls? That's correct. Okay. Um, and I was going to ask you about some of these phone calls and texts. I know that they have been a while ago. Um, have you had a chance to review any records in preparing for your testimony? No, sir. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to ask you some, and if, if there are ones that you have trouble remembering about particular texts and all, some of them might be remembered, um, I, could, I have copies and may be able to try to refresh your memory. Okay. Those. So, um, Sometimes that you would too would text about needs that the kids might have. Is that true? That's true. Um, and do you remember a text from April seventh of that year, a couple days before um, the events that we're here talking about, where Nate texted you that Nautica had left her meds? Sustained as to. It's not being. It's not being offered for the truth of the matter, Your Honor. Uh, 
establish their relationship. Limited purposes. Again, okay. members of the jury, it's not made under oath. It's an out-of-court statement. You're solely to consider it for the purposes of uh, to, uh, I'm not sure for what purpose you're offering it, but uh, something other than the truth of the matter asserted. Yes, sir. All right, to establish the relationship? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, that's fine. Go ahead. Um, a text um, in which Nate said, sent a test saying, Nautica left her meds. I don't remember. Okay. Um, would it help refresh your memory if I, if some of these came and showed you some of these texts? Uh You know, my, my concern here is, I don't know how much of a concern it is, but that we may be getting into the point where the defendant is starting to offer evidence in the state's case in chief. With the note, notebook and the green notebook, LaTanya um, identified those. I don't think there was any content that was um, going into. Now when we start talking about these text messages that I'm aware of, we've shared with Mr. Brown, obviously, I think we're going to start talking about content at, at this point in terms of what these text messages say, whether it's what the defendant says or what Tanya says. And, and at that point, I think we're getting over into the, the defense offering evidence stage. And so that's my concern at this point. So as I understand that the it's not necessarily an objection, but rather just a, con a concern that this may be raising the issue of who has the final argument at this. Yes, sir. I, I would say so. Yeah, yes, sir. I'd that thought crossed my mind. And, and uh, I know that you're very well aware of that, counsel. So uh, I'm assuming you're making a calculated to present information that could well be viewed as presenting evidence for the purposes of determination of the final closing argument. Yes, I'm not going to concede that what we're doing is doing that, but it is certainly a calculation that we have discussed among ourselves and would be if you were to rule, uh, then we would be prepared to make an argument. But we, but we have forecasted about what we plan to do and everything else and believe that this is in the best interest of, uh, of okay. our case. And that, that's fine. I, I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to take a break just to, to yes. make sure that everybody was what aware I of that. To do with this is some of this is to show her some of these texts to refresh memory 
because it's very understandable she will not remember things from several years ago with it at all, and I plan to be the one reading the text myself. But that's but I do understand there's risk and that could be an issue that we would it's possible that could be an issue that we would be arguing in the days to come. But and I guess where I would just my forecast for any objection at this point is when yeah, if there is some basis besides um, for the truth of the matter asserted, but when we start talking about Nate, what's Nate saying in a lot of these texts, I'd, I'd, I am going to have an objection to those. Yeah. I would argue that almost all of them go to state of mind about relationship. There's nothing, there are going to be things about things such as, you know, medicine, um, and I'm not going to say all of them, but things like, um, can you, you know, this disappointment about missing a party, and can you, um, you know, can Jeremy come see you, and all. Those are things I don't think are covered by hearsay simply because I understand that the defense, that if we offer something from Mr. Holden, it is not, does not meet the party opponent exception, but I don't think we're offering it for, quote, the truth of the matter asserted here. All right. Uh, I, I think that there is some uh, some room to offer these sorts of statements to show uh, not for the truth of the matter asserted, but rather to establish the nature of the relationship. And so I, I provide some latitude on that. Uh, I do, I'm, again, I'm confident that you are aware of the case law relating to the final closing argument and, and that we'll take that issue up at the close of all the evidence. So it's not, not an issue that we need to address right now. All right. Very good. Let's bring jurors back in, please. Yes, please. Um, Ms. Allen, I think we talked about the fact that since it was a long time ago, you don't remember specific text messages. But if I if I showed you some messages and asked you to read them to yourself, and then I can ask if it refreshes your memory, and then I might read you and see if it's been read accurately, if that makes sense. And I'm going to ask to show you, and this is um, all from what's been marked for identification purposes as Defendant's Exhibit Number Four. Okay. Um, if you can show, uh, at the bottom of the page, there's two, and I, well, first of all, well, bottom of the page, you see a couple, if you could read those two, look at the bottom of the page yourself. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and does that refresh your memory about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. You do not remember um, a, a text from Nate on April 7th about Nautica left to meds? No. Okay. And you say, um, I'll get some more today? I don't remember. Okay. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I don't remember. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, you know, they don't want speaking okay. close. Unfortunately, it makes it, you know, like we're having a conversation, but it's important that everybody hears it, including the court, the court reporter, and the juror. So I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember, you know, 
ask a question about, you talked earlier about the fact that you had not gone to Jeremy's birthday party that was at Nate's house on the day of his birthday. That's correct. That was a cookout of book. Yes. And do you remember um, receiving some text messages from um, Nate about that? Um, yes, but I don't remember um, what they were, what it said. Um, let me show you some of these, see, see if this refreshes your memory. Okay. Um, if you could read the, to yourself, um, the one on top there, mm -hmm. okay, <coughs> and does that refresh your memory? Yes. Okay, and you remember receiving a text from Nate that said, um, Jeremy was mad you didn't come to his cookout. Everybody was looking for you. We missed you. It turned out good. DOA. Remember that text? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, um, and then on April 8th, and I guess April 8th was the day before the incident that walked. Yes, sir. Um, and do you remember getting text from Nate concerning whether you would have a chance to see Jeremy? No, I don't remember anything on the 8th from him. Well, let me show you these texts, and if you could read, there okay. is a series of text exchanges. You can read to yourself these okay. ones. Okay, yes, I remember. Okay, you do remember that? Yes. Okay, and so do you remember receiving a text from Nate saying, you got time to eat lunch with Jay? Yes, sir. And Jay would be Jeremy? Jeremy. Okay. Uh, and your response was, not today, got to make up time at work? Yes. Okay. Um, and then Nate responding, you said you was off, okay. Well, just think about spending some time with him. He miss you. Remember that? Yes. Um, um, and then you responded, I can't call him because his phone is off, so he needs to call me. Yes. Um, and you said, you know how to, and he said, you know how to contact him. Yes. And you responded, how? Yes. And you said, same way you talked to girls all last week. Remember that? <coughs> That one ring a bell? Uh, yes. And sometimes there were text messages that maybe the girls would use his phone to text you. Yes. Okay, and you remember that? Yes. About it. On April 9th, do you remember receiving one text message from him that day? I don't remember. I remember a phone call. Um, I didn't answer the phone. I don't remember any texts on that day from him. Um, if you could read to yourself um, text message and see if that refreshes your memory. Okay. Does that refresh your memory? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But he texted you and said, um, call me when you get a chance. Yes. I remember him calling my cell phone that morning, early that morning, because I was on my way to work, and he called my job. Okay. So those were the calls. And yes. There were three calls to your job. Okay. Yes. But at no point did you, you have a chance. You never talked to him on the phone. No. <laughs>
And the two of you had had phone conversations in the week beforehand? Um, yes, probably. Remember one time when you, um, when you called him and you talked for about 10 minutes and then, then the phone may have dropped and he called you back? No. Would that be surprising to hear that that happened? No, I wouldn't. Because, I mean, one reason being that probably don't remember all the phone calls you had. That's correct. And a lot of times you all will be calling to talk about situations with children. Children, yes. Because you were at that point co-parenting. Yes. And you had kind of an interesting situation where every other week, well, where you had two of the kids <coughs> primarily. Yes. And he had a good shot. That's correct. And, and, you, and you were both sharing the weekends you had to. Yes. And even the split up couples, that takes a lot of coordination. Yes. Um, you talked about the fact that you mentioned earlier about the birthday party. Yes. And, and Jeremy's birthday was April 5th. Yes. Um, and originally, you had said that you would come to the birthday party. Yes. Um, and the fact that you were going to help out. Yes. Um, do you remember if you were going to bring the cake? Something I was supposed to bring. I'm not for sure. Okay. So it, it was something that you did. Yes. Bring. But you decided that given your all's relationship at that time, yours and Nate's relationship, Time, that is not a good idea to go to the party. Yes. So in the end, you did not come. Correct. And since Nate had custody of, of Jeremy that weekend, um, you hadn't seen Nate, you hadn't seen Jeremy since his birthday. Correct. Um, and that was true on April 9th. You had not seen him since his birthday that time. That's correct. Yes. Um, and so normally you would have gone to church that night. Correct. But instead you were at home. And when Jeremy came in, had you been sleeping? Yes. Yeah. And um, he came in to the house. Yes. Um, and I, I would just say this. I'm going to ask you something. Question. You can try not to ask too many. I'm just going to ask you a lot. I know this is an unspeakable, horrible thing to do. But I think it's fair to say that you don't remember everything that's happened. Is that correct? Um, I remember a lot that happened. But there are things that you remember that you don't remember. That's correct. You know, there are things that Mr. Wallace showed you some pictures and asked, you know, what do you remember going out of the room and things like that? And you, you were not sure about that. Where I was at when, during, during the beating? Yeah. Yes. Things about that. And so, um, so there may be specific details that you don't remember as well. True. Because, you know, probably it's been several years. And it was a very traumatic event. That's correct. Um, you, um, you came in, you came into your room, um, and you hugged Jeremy? So. That's correct. Well, Jeremy, like, plopped down on the bed with me, and he hugged me. 
And then two of you talk a little bit. Yes. You asked what, you, what he's doing next. Yes. He told you. Dad wanted to see you. I'm sorry. Dad oh. wanted to see him. Oh. To see me. Okay. So apparently my microphone was off, but I. Um. Um. And then you heard a series of shots. Yes. And you testified beforehand, I believe, that some of the shots were inside the house? Yes, sir. Some of the shots were outside the house? Yes, sir. Um, and when the first shots happened, during the time when your parents were shot, you were in a different room from them. Is that correct? That's correct. And you did not see that part? That's correct. Um, if I may just have a second. Ma'am, I have, I have no further questions at this time. Thank you. Redirect. Just a few, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, LaTanya, when we were talking about the January 2nd incident, I asked you if, if you thought that the defendant was impaired that day, um, if he was on drugs or alcohol, that, that you could tell. Um, based on your relatively brief interaction with him on the night of April 9th, could you tell if he was impaired in, in any way? No, he wasn't. Okay. Didn't appear to be impaired to you? Correct. Your, your brother testified yesterday, and we talked about phone calls a little bit, that um, he called you several times the morning of January 2nd. Why, why weren't you able to answer him at that point? Um, because Nathan was arguing with me. I couldn't answer my phone at the time. <coughs> and talking about the text messages that Mr. Brown brought up, on the night of April 9th, do you recall getting text messages from uh, Lamont Lynch and Terry Jones? Yes, sir. What do you recall about those text messages? Um, um, I think they was just letting me know that Nate was at came by the church or he was at the church. And do you recall about what time um, you received those text messages? No, sir. Would it have been while your um, daughters and mother were still at church? Yes, sir. If I may briefly pull up Exhibit 1, you're on a... Yes, sir. Wait, take long. Is that the exhibit? Yes, sir, it is. Latanya, well, can do you recognize that, that photograph? Now? Yes, sir. What what do you see there? That's my parents' home and that's my car parked in the front. Okay, that, that's your Dodge Avenger that you yes. spoke about earlier. Yes, sir. And when you were testifying on direct, you said that you heard the defendant's truck and that it, it parked near a window to yes. your to your room. Can you show us in that photograph, um, describe for us where your window was? Um, my room was that back window on the right side where the um, AC unit is located. Okay, that, that's what I was going to ask you. There appears to be a window unit for an air conditioning. Yes, sir. That That's where your room was. Yes, sir. The room we saw where uh, I think there was a bed spread that was pulled back and you said nothing happened in that room. Correct. But that's where you were when the truck pulled up. Yes, sir. And from what you could tell, the truck pulled up relatively close to your window. Yes, sir. Huh. Thank you, Your Honor. The night in question, April 9th, April 9th ma'am, you know, I asked you on direct about whether or not you recall if, you're, if your father had guns in the house and you said you didn't know of any. Is that right? That's correct. I didn't see any. Specifically in regards to April 9th of 2014, um, while you were home with your father, at any point that night, did you see him with a gun? No, sir. Whether it be a pistol or a shotgun or anything like that? No, sir. And prior to the defendant walking in your house that night, um, did you hear your dad say anything about him having a gun or um, sitting at the kitchen table with a gun? No, sir. So to your knowledge, your dad did not have a gun that night? That's correct.
If we may have just one moment. Recross. No, sir. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Thank you. <coughs> Further evidence for the state? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, at this time we um we would call Miss Terry Jones to the scene. your left hand on the Bible and raise your right. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Will you please state, state your name for us? My name is Terry R. Williams. Okay. And have you been known as Terry Jones in the past? Previously, yes. Okay. Um, are you married now? No, or not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Switch your name the other way. Yes. Okay. Um, well, Miss Williams, I, I I apologize. Do you um do you know the lady that just testified, Miss Latanya Allen? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about how you know Latanya Allen? Uh, well, I met Latanya back in I want to say ninety five. My parents had joined their church, um, so I've been on her quite some time. And when you say her church, which which church is that? Zion Hill Holiness Church. Okay. And do you know the defendant in this case? Yes, sir. Okay. How, how do you know him? Um, through mutual friends from going to the church. There were, um, we had a couple of friends around in that neighborhood. So just through mutual friends. Well, Miss Williams, I want to I want to turn your attention back to um, April 9th of 2014 and ask you a little bit about that night. Okay. Mm hmm. And Miss um, Miss Williams, on April 9th of twenty fourteen, were you at the Zion Hill Holiness Church? Yes, sir. At Bible study. It was a Bible study. Mm -hmm. uh, were there a lot of people there at the church that night? Not too many. I want to say maybe maybe ten at the most. And, and how big of a congregation is that church? Um, you know? it was fairly small at the time. What time did your uh, Bible study start that night? It started at seven thirty. And that night, was Miss Anglia Taylor present? Yes, sir. What was her role in the Bible study that night? She, she held Bible study. Um, she was a teacher at that night. And how about the girls that we've been talking about, Amber and Nautica? Did you see them there at the church that night? Yes, sir. Were they part of the Bible study or were they? Yes, it was a small, it was just a little small group. We were all in the um, kitchen. Now, at some point that night, Ms. Williams, did you um, happen to come into contact with, with JT? Yes, I saw him prior to um, Bible study ending. Uh, well, right after Bible study ended, he had came in and spoke to um, Pastor Taylor. The Pastor who? Taylor. Pastor Taylor. Yes, sir. A Anglia. Yes, sir. And about, about what time did Bible study end that night? Mm, it was like... It was about eight forty-five, nine o'clock. And did you have yourself have a conversation with JT that night? I just briefly spoke to him, said, "Hey, I was kind of shocked. We were all kind of shocked to see him because we didn't expect him to come that night." But um, just briefly spoke and said, "Hey." Other than just kind of ex exchanging pleasantries, did you have any kind of in-depth conversation with him at that point? No, sir. Did he tell you why he was there? No, I um overheard him speaking with Pastor Taylor um, that his dad was looking for his mom. And she was like, well, she's not here. She um, she was at home sick. But that was all, that was all I heard. I was preparing to leave myself, me and my kids. 
So um, did Jeremy or JT appear to be in pretty good spirits at that point? Yes, sir. Now, after you heard um, JT tell uh, Pastor Taylor and Galea Taylor why he was there, um, did did you talk to Latanya or communicate with her in any way? I texted her. Okay. What What did you text uh, Latanya that night? If I can recall, I just asked her. Um, I had let her know that Nate was there, and I asked her. I said, "Did you know he was here? Like, what what was he doing here?" But that was it that I can recall. Did she respond to you in any way, uh, Miss Williams? I don't recall her responding to me. Did you see the defendant himself there that night? I heard the truck. I didn't physically see him, no. And that, that his truck has been described a couple times during the course of this trial. What, what truck did you know him to drive? Um, I just know it was like a pickup truck. And did it have a pretty distinctive sound yes, to it? Yes, sir. Was it unusual for the defendant to, to come to your, your church there on, on a poor Wednesday night Bible study? At that particular time, um, because from my understanding, he wasn't allowed on the, the church premises. So he, he hadn't been there in quite some time? Correct. You saw JT having that conversation with his grandmother there? No, sir. Um, do you know if he left with his dad or anything like that? Well, I'm sh sure he left with his dad. I mean, that was the only way he got there, but... I didn't, like I said, I had got my kids and we had left, so. Was... All right. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Cross-examination, Ms. Hamburg. Your Honor, thank you. Uh, Ms. Williams, uh, Jeremy was, uh, was there in the church with y'all for, what, a few minutes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and Mr. Holden never set foot inside the church that evening, right? Not inside the church, no. Okay, thank you. Hmm? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Your Honor, at this time, we ask that we take the afternoon recess to prepare to set up the next witness. All right, that'll be fine. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and recess until 20 minutes till 4. Uh, please recall all my rules and instructions and leave your notepads in your chairs. Gather in the deliberation room at 22.